Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the rosebud dishcloth. This is pattern number 612. It's available on our website and I have that link in the description box for your convenience. This is just a cute little dress me up my kitchen for the spring and summer using that little rosebud stitch and creating your dishcloth. We're adding this wonderful lacy type granny style border onto your dishcloth and the end size is about eight and a half inches from top to bottom and nine inches from side to side. So I have a few samples for you today. Now today I'm going to make this particular dishcloth here but let me show you some other samples the next one I have here is one made using some bright red yellow and white so that's one idea the next one I have blue and yellow which is really pretty now most of mine I use two different colors I used one color for the bottom one color for the top and I chose a different color for the center I'm not sure why I did that but you can use a different color for each row if you want or you can use each row the same color it's up to you the next one I have is almost like the one we're going to make today this is the one we're making today where you can see it's almost the same where I used the green for the leaves and then pink and yellow but this one was a lime green this is a sage green and then you can see how by adding the white how it draws the white out from the center and just adds that burst of brightness and freshness and cleanliness it just adds that pop so when you add the color I think it takes a little bit away it's pretty but I think the white just really brings out the colors in the center because you're looking at the center of the dishcloth I have one more sample and this one I made using more of a cream color let me get my all these ends out of the way it does have a lot of ends so there's a lot of ends to this dishcloth but I'll show you how to weave those ends in so this one was made with a cream color and it just if you don't like those bright whites and you just want something a little more neutral so that's the one with the cream color so this is the one we're going to make today and I'll be right back and I'm going to show you what you need how much you need and what size crochet hook you need to make this dishcloth and then we'll get started so for today's project you're going to need four colors or however many colors you want to use for your dishcloth now you're going to need your background color you're going to need a color for your leaves I'm using white for my background I'm using sage green for my leaves and I'm going to use pink and yellow for my flowers now you can choose to make your dishcloth using all one color so you can get away with three colors if you wish I'm going to use four colors and I'm going to put a you know that second color right in the middle of the dishcloth to separate it and give it a little more color so for this pattern you're going to need about a half an ounce of four different colors so if you have extra cotton yarn left over from other projects this is a great pattern to use that cotton up you're also going to need a size five millimeter or an eight H crochet hook so grab your materials and I'll be right back and we'll get this project started. I have my yarn attached to my hook and I just use a double knot. You can attach your yarn in whichever method you choose. And now we're going to start with a chain of 22 chains. So you're going to yarn over the hook. You're going to pull it through the loop on your hook and that creates your first chain. Yarn over pull through that's two yarn over pull through that's three continue until you have a chain with 22 chains and I'll be back and we'll get row one started I'm back I have my chain with 22 chains so double check your chain count count them make sure there's 22 and now we're going to start row one row one we're going to skip that first chain we're going to insert into the second chain from hook and we're going to work a single crochet yarn over the hook pull it through that chain you have two loops on your hook 
yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a single crochet. Insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two loops. So for row one, you're going to work one single crochet in each chain across and including that last chain. So go ahead and work one single crochet in each chain across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one and I have one chain remaining so I'm going to work my single crochet into that ending chain and now row one is finished. You chain 22 but you will only have 21 single crochet across your row so you can go ahead and do a second stitch count count your single crochet and make sure you have 21 stitches and then that way you know that you're starting your pattern off on the right foot with the correct number of stitches so now we're going to start row two row two we're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work you're going to skip this beginning chain one and you're going to insert right in that first single crochet so this is the loop on your hook this is the chain one and you're going to insert into that next stitch right beside the chain one work a single crochet we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across insert underneath both loops of the stitch and work a single crochet insert into the next stitch you can see that horizontal bar insert underneath that bar and under both loops of that top of that stitch and work a single crochet and you're just going to continue in that manner across your row so go ahead and work one single crochet in each stitch across I'll meet you at the end of row two I'm over at the end of row two and I have my ending stitch remaining so if you're new to crochet and you're getting over to the end you can see you have that one horizontal bar going across that stitch and if you turn your work you can see that little teardrop or heart shape here for that last stitch so you're just going to go underneath both those top strands and work a single crochet I'm going to fasten off my background color. Now I'm going to leave a long length because I like to have enough that I come back with my yarn needle and weave all these ends in. Now when I fasten off, I chain two, one, two. I pull my hook up and pull that yarn out. I grab that thread of yarn, strand of yarn, and then I pull down and what it does is it forms a secure knot of your work. Now you may have your own preferred method and that is fine. Use whatever method is the most comfortable for you. When you count your stitches you should again have 21 single crochet across your row. So now we're going to start row three and row three we're going to change to the color you want to use for your leaves. Now I'm using sage green, so we're going to go ahead and turn our work. I'm going to insert my hook into that first single crochet stitch and we're working under both loops of that stitch. So just insert underneath both strands of that stitch. Now it's up to you. You can take your yarn and you can tie it if you feel more secure with your yarn being tied. You can go ahead and tie it right to that piece of yarn you fastened off. Just make sure you leave a long enough length that you can get your yarn needle to get those ends weaved in. So I just tied a double knot and I'm going to pull my yarn up against the side of my work. Now usually I just pull my yarn through and then I secure it when I'm all done with the dishcloth. But because the dishcloths are used really hard and you're scrubbing dishes and it's going back and forth, you might want to really secure it with that secured knot. So we're going to grab that new color and pull it through that first stitch and we're going to start and we're going to work two half double crochets together into a cluster puff stitch. We're going to chain one, 
Now the first half double crochet when we're doing the two together is work differently because we're leaving that last loop on the hook when we make that stitch. We're going to yarn over, we're going to insert back into that same stitch, we're going to yarn over, pull back through that stitch. Now for the first cluster we're only going to have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. You're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're going to make the two half double crochet together into this same beginning stitch. We're going to yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You now have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull back through that stitch. You're going to pull up on your hook until it's nice and snug and you should have a total of five loops. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook, all five loops. So you just made your first cluster shell stitch. So now we're going to go ahead and start our repeat. So if you need help, this is where you click back on the video and you'll start where I say this is the start of the repeat and work until I say this is the end of the repeat. So the beginning of the repeat, we're going to chain one. We're going to skip the next three single crochet. One, two, three. And then we're going to work our half double crochet cluster shell. We're going to yarn over. You're going to go into that fourth stitch. So you skip three, one, two, three. Insert into that fourth stitch and remember to go under both loops. You're going to yarn over, pull back through that stitch. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, insert back into that same single crochet yarn over, pull back through that stitch, and you have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all five loops on your hook. We're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to work two half double crochet together again into that same stitch. You're going to yarn over, insert into that same single crochet, yarn over, pull back through that stitch, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull back through that stitch. You have five loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. And that is the end of the repeat. So let me show you one more time. Again, this is the start of the repeat. We're going to chain one, we're going to skip the next three stitches. One, two, three. You're going to yarn over, insert into that fourth stitch, yarn over, pull back through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull back through that stitch. You have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work two half double crochet together again into this same stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook and that is the end of the repeat. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and work right across the row with you. So let's begin again. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip the next three stitches, yarn over, insert into that fourth stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. You're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're going to work two half double crochet together in that same stitch. Yarn over the hook, 
insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. You're going to chain one, skip the next three stitches, yarn over, insert into that fourth stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops on the hook. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work two half double crochet together into that same stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. Three loops on the hook, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. We have one more repeat to go and we're going to end into that last stitch and when you're looking at your work and you're new to crocheting you'll see how your stitches form that teardrop and you can see this is your last stitch across. So let's begin again. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip the next three single crochet, yarn over the hook, insert into the last stitch and make sure you're going under both loops, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, insert into that same last stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops on the hook. You're going to chain two, one, two. You're going to yarn over, insert into that same last stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. You should have a total of six cluster shells across. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you should have a total of five chain one spaces made in between those shells. One, two, three, four, and five. So now we're going to fasten off the color we use for the leaf and you're going to pick your color for your flowers. Okay, my scissors don't want to work. Again, I chain two, one, two, I pull up on my hook, pull the yarn out, and then I just pull down and it creates a secure knot. Now I'm going to leave all my ends hang and again this dishcloth does have a lot of ends and you'll have to weave them in but I'm going to do that when I'm all finished with my design. So now for row four you do not turn your work. So this is the right side we just fastened off. You're just going to go right back to the beginning of where you started row three. So you want to come back over to the side where you started row three. So this is where we fastened off. You're going to come back here. We're going to insert our hook into the first chain two space of that shell stitch. So I'm just going to insert my hook and I'm going to grab my pink. Now I'm leaving a long length. I'm leaving about a six inch length and I'm just going to pull my color through. I'm not going to knot it. I'll come back and when I'm all finished with the dishcloth, you can knot your yarn with your needle when you're all done. I'm going to grab that new color and I'm just going to pull it through and I'm just going to leave this end hang down. We're going to start and we're going to make our little rosebuds now. We're going to start and we're going to work three half double crochet together in this same beginning chain two space. And again, when you make the first three half double crochet together, it will be made differently because we're using a chain stitch for that first half double crochet when you begin that row. So we're going to chain one and that's going to count as the first half double crochet. You're going to yarn over, insert into that same chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, insert back into that same chain two space, 
yarn over and pull through. You have a total of five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops in your hook. You just made your first rosebud. Now we're going to start our repeat, so if you need help, you will click back on the video to where I say this is the start of the repeat of row three, and follow it until I say this is the end of the repeat, and then you just follow that across your row. So let's begin the repeat. We're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to skip the next chain one space in between the shell stitches so we're skipping this next chain one space and we're going to work three half double crochet together into the next chain two space of that next shell stitch yarn over the hook insert into that next chain two space of that shell stitch yarn over and pull through you have three loops on your hook yarn over insert back into that same chain two space yarn over and pull back through. You now have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, insert back into that same space, yarn over and pull through. You now have seven loops on your hook, two, four, six, and seven. You're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. And that is the end of the repeat. So pretty simple repeat across. So let's do it again. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to work our three half double crochet together all into this chain two space of this next shell stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops. Yarn over, insert into that same chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You now have five loops on your hook yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have seven loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. And that is the end of the repeat. So I'm going to work it right along with you across the row. You're going to chain three, one, two, and three. You're going to skip the next chain one space and work three half double crochet together in the next chain two space of that next shell stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert into that same chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You now have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into that same space, yarn over and pull through. You now have seven loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. That is the end of the repeat. We have two to go, so let's begin again. You're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to work three half double crochet together all into that chain two space of that next shell stitch. Yarn over, insert into the chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain three space, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert back into that same space, yarn over and pull through. You have seven loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. One to go. You're going to chain three, one, two and three. We're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain two space of that last shell stitch across, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into that same chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into that same space, yarn over and pull through. You have seven loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. We're going to fasten off, so make sure you leave it a long enough length. It doesn't matter if they look funny, it's better to have them too long than not long enough. And again, I'm going to chain two, one, two. I pull my hook up and pull that yarn out. 
I grab the arm with this hand, I take my two fingers and pull down, and it just makes a nice secured knot. And this is what your work should look like. This is the front side of your work, and this is the back side. So let's go back over to our dishcloth where we fastened off. This is what it looks like. And now we're going to go back and we're going to use our background color. We fastened off on this side and now I'm going to go back to the beginning of row four to attach my yarn for row five. So again, you just finished your work. This is where you fastened off, but you want to return to the beginning of the row you just made. I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that cluster stitch so you can follow it right up to the top and you can see this is the stitch you need to go in. So go under the top two strands of that stitch. And again, I'm not securing my yarn. I'm just going to leave about a six inch length and I'm going to go right over to the beginning of row four. So now I'm going to insert my hook on the left side of this stitch. So I'm over there. This kind of looks like the beginning stitch, but I'm going in the one over here. So if you look at the stitch, you'll see there's a little triangle right here on the side of that stitch. I'm going to insert my hook right into that space there. I'm going to pull my new color through, and then I'm going to start and chain one. I'm going to work one single crochet into the top of the same stitch. So insert right back into the same stitch that you pulled your yarn through and work a single crochet. Now we're going to start our repeat. We're going to work two long double crochets and we're going down three rows below into that center single crochet of the skip three single crochet. So when you drop down three rows, one, two, three, you'll see the three single crochet going across that we skipped and we're going to work right into that center stitch. So yarn over the hook, you're coming to the front of your work in front of those chain spaces and you're going down three rows, one, two, three, you're going to insert right into the center of that single crochet of those three skip stitches. Your hook's going from front to back. You're going to yarn over, grab that yarn from behind, and pull it through. So you can see it's wrapping right around your chain stitches. You're going to pull up, you're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and pull through two. We need to do that one more time. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, three rows below, one, two, three, right where you made that first double crochet yarn over and pull through. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You just made your two double crochet. Now we're going to work two single crochet into the top of the next cluster. So find your next cluster stitch. You can see this big giant long stitch here at the top. You can see that little triangle space here, and that's where we're going to insert our hook. Insert into that stitch and work two single crochet. There's one, and there's two. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's start the repeat again. We're going to start with the two double crochet three rows below into that center single crochet or the second single crochet of that skip group of three. You're going to yarn over, drop down three rows, one, two, three, insert into that center single crochet and if you have to move that stitch to see them, this is the center one, insert from front to back, grab your yarn, yarn over, pull back through that stitch and pull up. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. We need to do that one more time. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over, pull back through that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. You want to keep it so your stitches are the same height as your single crochet. Now we're going to work two single crochet into the top of that cluster. Insert your hook at the top of that cluster in that wide stitch. 
and work two single crochet. One and two. That is the end of the repeat. We're going to go ahead and just work that right across. I'll work right with you. You're going to yarn over, drop down three rows, one, two, three, insert into that center single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and pull up. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two loops. You're going to yarn over, drop down, insert into that same stitch just worked, yarn over, pull back through that stitch, and pull up. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and pull through two loops. Find your next puff stitch. You're going to insert right into the top of that puff stitch. You can see that little triangle. Insert into that stitch and work two single crochet. One and two. That is the end of the repeat. We need to do that two more times. Yarn over, drop down three rows, one, two, three. Insert into that center single crochet. Work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over, pull back through, and pull up. You're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and pull through two loops. You're going to work two single crochet into the top of this next puff stitch, insert into the top of that stitch, and work two single crochet. One and two. We have one repeat to go. Yarn over the hook, drop down three rows, one, two, and three, insert into that center single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and pull up. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch three rows below, and work a double crochet, pulling it up to the current level of work. So now we're over to our last rosebud. You're just going to go right into the top of that stitch. It might be a little hard because sometimes when I fasten off, I fasten off too tight. Now when I fasten off, sometimes I fasten off too tight. So you just got to kind of grab it somewhere here towards the end. I'm just going to try to go right under the side of that stitch. So I'm going to go right into those two stitches there. So if you look at the work, I'm just going right underneath my knot because that's the only way I'm going to get my hook in there and I'm going to work two single crochet. One and two. So when you look at your work, you should have a total of 21 stitches. And we only have one single crochet starting the row and two ending because we need a total of 21 stitches for the pattern to work out. So it may seem odd because we're starting with one, but we do that because we need a total of 21 stitches. If you put two, then there's too many stitches and the pattern won't come out. So that's why it's made that way. So row five is finished, and now we're going to go ahead and start row six. Row six is a pretty easy row. We're going to chain one, we're going to turn our work, and we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. You're going to skip that loop on your hook, you're going to skip that next chain one space, and you're going to insert into the first stitch. So if you're new to crocheting, look for that V here, and that tells you that's your first stitch. Insert underneath the top two loops of that stitch, and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, make sure you're going under both loops, and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, and you're just going under the top two loops of each stitch across and working a single crochet. So go ahead and work one single crochet in each stitch across. I'll meet you at the end of row six. I'm over at the end of row six, and this is what your work should look like. 
and you should have a total of 21 single crochet across the top of your row. So now for row 7 and 8, we're just going to repeat row 6. We're going to chain 1, and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the loop on your hook, you're going to skip that next chain one space, insert into the first stitch of the row, and work a single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and work row seven and row eight by chaining one, turn your work, and then work one single crochet in each stitch across. And you'll do that for this row and the next row. And I'll meet you at the end of row 8. I'm over at the end of row 8 and you can see that you should have a total of four white rows on your work. You have row 5, row 6, row 7, and row 8. So row 5 is where you work the double crochet and then we work three rows of single crochet. So now it's time to fasten off and again, leave a longer length because it's best to have too long of a length than too short. I chain two, one, two, pull up on your hook, pull that yarn out, grab your yarn with one hand, and then pull down with the other, and it knots your work. So that is how you do the sections with the flowers. Now I'm not going to go ahead and repeat what I already showed you. So what I'm going to do now is you want to click back on the video and you want to start with row three, which is your leaves, and you're going to repeat rows three through row eight. So what you want to do is if you're using another color for your flowers, when you repeat rows three through eight, when you go to do row four here with your flower, your rosebud, make sure you use the correct color that you want to use for that center flower. So I'm going to use yellow. So again, click back on the video. So go ahead and repeat rows three through eight, and you're repeating your leaves, your flowers, and then these four rows of white that we just did. And I will meet you at the end of row 14. I'm over at the end of row 14, and I just repeated rows three through eight, but I used a different color for my rosebud. Now I know this doesn't look quite as nice with all these yarn ends hanging out at the end of the rows, but I'll clean that up when I'm done with my dishcloth, and I'll show you how to do that. So now we're going to make one more section. So what I'm going to do and what you need to do is we're only going to repeat rows three through five. So what you want to do is go back and click back on the video to row three and you're going to repeat the colors you made for row three, row four, and then you're going to do one row of white for row five. So go ahead and click back on the video, make one more section. You're going to only repeat rows three, four, and then that one row of white with row five and use whatever color you want. Now you can use the same color I'm going to use of pink, or you can choose even another color and make three different rosebud colors. So just go ahead, repeat rows three through five, and then I will meet you at the end of row 17. I'm over at the end of row 17, and this is what your work should look like. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to finish with one more row and we're going to work one row of single crochet. And that just makes the bottom match up with the top of our work. You're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. We're going to skip that beginning chain one. Insert into the first single crochet under both loops and work a single crochet insert into the next stitch and you're only going under the top two loops. Work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across your row and I will meet you at the end of row 18. So I just finished row 18 
and we're on the wrong side of the work. So we're getting ready to start the border around our dishcloth. So what I want to do before I start the border is you want to go ahead and because this is on the wrong side, you're going to grab these ends and weave them in. Now I'm going to show you up close. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit closer. When you look at your rows that you knotted, where I fastened off and I knotted, you can do those rows first. You just grab that yarn and you're going to attach it to your yarn needle. And you need to weave those stitches in and out and make them nice and secure. So let me just show you what I do. What I do is I'll take this and I'll bring it right up underneath those pink stitches. and out through the green and then I pull that snug pull my other end out but I don't think that's enough to really secure that when you just go under a couple stitches because you're going to be using these and you're going to be going like that and doing dishes you really want to make sure this is nice and secure so I'm going to come down and I want to go in and out through the stitches themselves and I'm just going to come underneath these stitches now it's a little more work when you make a design with so many colors and so many ends and I know it's frustrating even I don't like to weave in ends I'm going to come back up and I'm going to go right back and go underneath these pink stitches that I already went under but what I'm doing is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try to grab one extra stitch so let me pull that out sorry about my hands and now I'm going to just take my hook and I'm going to jump over this stitch and go back underneath those pink stitches. And you want to try to make sure you're not going through the other side. And then I'm just going to catch a stitch. Make sure you catch a stitch and at least have a strand of yarn, catch it, and then go back through one more time. and that's how I weave in my ends. So let me fasten that one off. And when you turn it over on the other side, you cannot see those ends. So now here I have a pink end that this is where I started and there's no knot. So what you wanna do is you want to knot that yarn. Take your yarn needle thread your yarn and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come down and catch this stitch here you you need to catch it on a loop so it holds your yarn and then I'm going to well I'm just going to pull that through because it's a little awkward and then I'm going to go under my stitches I just need to get in a nice place to to make that knot so I'm coming out on the other side of these white stitches and then you want to grab one strand of yarn on the back side take your hook under it but before you pull that loop closed let me get my yarn a little shorter you want to keep a loop and then you're going to take your yarn needle through that loop and that helps knot your yarn to secure it and just pull that tight and then you're going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to come back over here under these white stitches again. But then I maneuver it wherever I feel I want to. I'll just bring it down here underneath these pink stitches and work it under these pink stitches and out the other side. And then I'll come back up, go back underneath those white stitches back over to the end whoops my hand might be in the way and you just want to make sure that you go back and forth enough that it's not going to work itself out make sure you're going in tight spots you don't want to go in real loose spots so now I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to go under this and see if I can just catch a stitch and go back under and come out the other side and I'm trying to go in a spot that's really tight because it helps hold the yarn. So let me pull it back out through there. I hope you've seen that. I was 
trying to watch what I was doing and didn't watch the monitor, so I hope you've seen how I knotted. And that's how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in all my ends before I start the border. So it's probably best if you do that too, because then you're not getting all these ends stuck when you're coming around the sides of your work. So go ahead and weave these yarn ends in, and I'll be back, and we'll put the border around our dishcloth. So I'm back. I weaved in all my ends. I'm on the wrong side of the work and we just finished row 18. So this is what it should look like once you fasten in all your ends and weave them in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work and we're going to start our border. So you're going to turn your work to the right side and then we're going to go ahead and just work across the top of our work again for the first side of round one of our border. So we're going to begin, let me zoom up a little more so I can get detailed a little more. We're going to chain one, skip the loop on your hook, you're going to skip this next chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first stitch and work a single crochet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a repeat across to the corner. Now we're going to chain one, we're going to skip that next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and work a single crochet. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and work a single crochet. And we're going to work that across to the corner chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next, and work a single crochet. Now for the border I'm going to work each stitch with you right around round one. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next, and work a single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, and we're almost over to our corner. You're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. We're over to our last two stitches. You can tell by looking at your work and seeing one, two. You're going to chain one, skip that next stitch, insert into the last chain across the top of your work, and work a single crochet. Now we're at the corner, so we're going to chain two, one, two, and that makes the transition around to the other side. So now you're going to turn your work and you're going to work down the second side and we're working down the length and we're going to be working in the row end stitches. We're going to single crochet into the first row end stitch. So when you're looking at your work right where this single crochet was worked, we're going to work into that same space in that first row end stitch. Insert into that same space, work a single crochet. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip the next row end stitch, so if you're not sure where the next row end stitch, look at your stitch, it's right here in this row, and then look for your next row, it's right here, this white row. So we're skipping that next white row and we're going to single crochet into this rosebud. Now because the rosebud is a cluster of stitches, you're just going to try to insert your hook right in the side edge of that stitch. Now I like to go into more, more than one strand, so I'll pick up that top strand and then I'll find a strand behind and I crochet really tight with this for some reason and single crochet into that stitch. and we're going to repeat that down to the next corner. We're going to chain one, we're going to skip that next row, which is the leaf row, 
and we're going to single crochet into the next white row and stitch. Insert into that next row and work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next row, insert into the next row and stitch and look for those stitches and follow them down. You can see the bottom of the stitch here. You're going to skip that row insert into the next row. Follow the stitches down and you can find your row end stitch. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip that next row end stitch. We're going to insert right in the edge of that rosebud. I try to go in just the one strand on the edge and then one strand behind. Just try to catch it in one of those strands behind your work. and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip the leaf row, insert into the next row, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip that next row. This is the row we just worked in underneath our leaf. You're going to skip this next row underneath and then go into the next row just in the edge of that row and stitch and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip the next row and you're going to work a single crochet right in the edge of this rosebud. Pick up the top loop, just one loop, and then find one loop in the back and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip your leaf and you're going to single crochet into the next row and stitch. You'll see that we have one row remaining when you get to that bottom corner. There's still one row. So we're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet right into the last row and stitch. And I always try to go under two strands of yarn. Grab one from the top and pick one up from the bottom and work a single crochet. We're going to chain two, one, two, and our corner is made. Now we're going to begin working across our foundation row. So we're going to be working in the chains at the base of those stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in the first chain. So this is where we made our last stitch and our ending stitch. This is our first chain. Insert into that first chain and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip the next chain. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. Chain one. You're skipping the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, and work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, we're continuing the same pattern across. Skip that next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. We're almost to our corner. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. We're over to our corner and when you look at your work you have this ending stitch here, this row end stitch. So that is going to be the first stitch we work in when we work up the other side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to chain two and form our corner. 
and then we're going to start our repeat of working in the row end stitches. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work a single crochet into this first row end stitch. So just follow that first row. You can see the stitch is really easy here. Follow it down. Whoops. Follow those stitches down. Find that end stitch. Insert around the end stitch and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip this next row and stitch this white stitch you're going to insert into the edge of your leaf coming down this side so just grab one strand and then try to pick one strand up on the back work a single crochet you're going to chain one you're going to skip your rosebud insert into the next row and stitch work a single crochet you're going to chain one. You're going to skip the next row end stitch, insert into the next row end stitch, and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip this next white row end stitch. We're going to insert right on the edge of this leaf. So try to grab just one strand of yarn on the top and grab one behind and work a single crochet chain one. You're going to skip your rosebud, insert into the next row end stitch right below that rosebud. You're going to insert and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip that next row end stitch, insert into the next row end stitch and work a single crochet. Chain one skip that next white row end stitch. You're going to pick up a loop of the leaf right on the edge. Just pick up one strand of yarn from that stitch and pick one up from the back and work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. We're skipping our rosebud we're inserting our hook into that next row end stitch of the white and we're working a single crochet. So now we're over to the last row end stitch. So don't get it confused with this top row of our border. This is our last row end stitch here. So we're going to chain one and we're going to work one single crochet into this last row end stitch. So work a single crochet now we're going to chain two, one, two, that forms our corner. So now we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that beginning single crochet of our round one of our border, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my white. Again, I always chain two, one, to pull up on my hook, pull my yarn out, grab my yarn and pull down and it just knots my work. Now you can end off in whichever manner you prefer. Now I crocheted a little bit tighter for this dishcloth than I did the other one so your gauge can vary depending on how tight or how loosely you crochet. Now the reason we use the same color as the background is because it blends it in and it uniforms our dishcloth. If we used a different color it might not look as nice because you want to do the first round in the same color so it blends in and just makes a nice um, formation for the rest of your rounds. So let's go ahead and start round two. I think I'm going to go ahead and use my yellow as my next color. So again, I leave about a six inch length and I'm just going back up to where I fastened off and I'm going to join my next color which again I'm using the yellow you can use whatever color you prefer but I try to use my center color so I'm going to insert my hook in the top corner chain 2 space so the corner chain 2 space is on this side of our joining we joined here so we want to come over here and insert into that corner chain 2 space so insert your hook now you can 
tie your yarn onto this white and pull it down if you wish. I, I do all that when I'm done. I'm just going to pull my new color through and I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. And this beginning chain three counts as my first double crochet. I'm going to yarn over and work a double crochet into that same stitch. Insert from front to back, yarn over, pull through, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's a double crochet. I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to make two more double crochet all into this corner chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same corner chain two space and work a double crochet. That's one. Yarn over, insert back into that same space and work your second double crochet. So your corner is made. You have two double crochet starting with that chain three which counts as your first. A double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. So you're forming your corner. Now we're going to work two double crochet in each chain one space across to the next corner. So yarn over the hook, you're going to skip that next single crochet, you're going to find that chain one space and work two double crochet. One, and two. We're going to continue and work two double crochet in each chain one space across to the next corner chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain one space, and work two double crochet. One, and two. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next chain one space, and work two double crochet. One, and two. And we're skipping the single crochet. We're only working in the chain spaces. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain one space, and work two double crochet. One, and two. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain one space, work two double crochet. One, and two. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain one space, work two double crochet. So I'm just going to go ahead and work my two double crochet in each chain one space across to the corner. You can follow along if you have to pause the video, go ahead and pause it until you catch up. I have three to go and I'm working two double crochet in each chain one space across to the corner. I'm over to my last chain one space and this is our corner chain two. So yarn over, insert into that last chain one space across and work your two double crochet. And that is all you're going to do around the other three sides. So let me get you started. We're over to the corner and this is the start of the repeat. You're going to yarn over and work two double crochet into that corner chain two space. One and two. You're going to chain two and you're forming your corner. Now you're going to turn and you're going to work two more double crochet into that same corner chain two space. Yarn over, insert into that same space and work two double crochet. One and two. So your corner is made and now all you have to do is work two double crochet in each chain one space across to your next corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and work them right across with you. Again, I'm working two double crochet in each chain one space. I'm going to work over to the next corner. 
and then you can continue around the other two sides of your dishcloth in between. We're only working in the chain one space. I'm almost over to the corner, a few to go. And again, you're working two double crochet in each chain one space across to that next corner, chain two. So I have two to go. And make sure when you're over to that corner where we added that extra chain one space at the end that you don't miss that chain one space. So here is the last chain one space. Yarn over, insert into that last chain one space, and work your two double crochet. So let me zoom out. Very simple round. So now what you're going to do is you're going to start in your corner chain two space and you're going to work your two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the corner chain two space. And then you're going to work two double crochet in each of the chain one spaces across to that next corner chain two space. So go ahead and repeat from the corner to the next corner. And that's all you have to do. Repeat that around your remaining two sides and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two and let me see if I can get this so you can see. This is the end of round two where we worked our border around with those double crochet stitches. And now we're going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the top of that beginning chain three. So count up one, two, three insert your hook into the top of that beginning chain three and slip stitch yarn over pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook so now again we're going to fasten off and I like to leave a longer length better to be too long than too short and not be able to have enough to work those ends in with your yarn needle so now I think I'm going to choose white. Now you can choose pink if you want, like if you're making your border with the center color as the first color, you can choose that pink as your second color. But I'm going to choose white and bring this background color back out to the outside and add a little more brightness to my dishcloth. Grab your next color and we're going to go back up where we fastened off. We fastened off here and we're going to join into this corner chain two space. Again, I'm going to leave about a six inch length. I'm going to insert my hook right into my corner chain two space and I'm going to draw my new color through. I'm going to leave the back end hang and I'll secure that when I'm done with my work. I'm going to start with the chain three, one, two, and three, and that beginning chain three counts as the first double crochet. I'm going to work a double crochet into the same corner chain two space, yarn over the hook, insert into that same corner chain two, and work a double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to slip stitch into the top of that last double crochet made. You're going to take your hook and bring it the bottom of your hook right down from top to bottom through the top of that front loop and out through the side and slip stitch. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to do that one more time in the corner only we're working two double crochet instead of that chain three. So yarn over, insert back into that corner chain two space and work two double crochet. One, yarn over, insert back into that same space, and work your second double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. You're going to bring your hook and go from top to bottom down through the front loop, and then out through the side of the stitch, and slip stitch. 
yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to be working between each group of two double crochet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to skip the next two double crochet and we're going to work two double crochet between the current group and the next group. So yarn over the hook, skip those next two double crochet, insert between the skip two double crochet and that next group, and work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over, insert into that same space, and work your second double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. You're going to come down and take your hook from top to bottom through the front loop and then out through the side of the stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And we're going to work that across to the next corner chain two space. So we're going to be working two double crochet and a picot stitch between each set of two double crochet across. So let me do it a few more times with you. You're going to yarn over, you're going to skip the next two double crochet, insert between the skip two and the next two, and work two double crochet. There's one, yarn over, insert into the same space, work your second double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, and three. You're going to bring your hook and go from top to bottom in the front loop of the last stitch made and then out through the side. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. I'll show you one more time. You're going to yarn over. You're going to skip the next two double crochet. Insert between the skip two double crochet and that next group and work two double crochet. There's one yarn over, insert into that same space, and work your second double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three, insert your hook from top to bottom through the front loop of that last stitch made, and then out through the side. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So continue working two double crochet and a picot stitch between each group of two double crochet across to your next corner chain two space and I'll meet you there. So I'm over at my next corner chain two space. So you can see I work two double crochet and a picot stitch across the one side of my dishcloth and I'm back to the corner chain two space. So you're just going to repeat the same process around the next three sides. So let me get you started. So to start the repeat, you're going to work two double crochet and a picot stitch two times into your corner chain two space. So yarn over the hook, insert into that next corner chain two space, work your two double crochet, there's one, there's two, I'm going to chain three, insert from top to bottom through that front loop and then out through the side of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to do that one more time in that same corner chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that corner chain two space, work your two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over, insert back into that same corner chain two space, work your second double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three, insert from top to bottom through the front loop, out through the side, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So now you're starting across your next side and you're going to work across to that next corner chain two space. So we're going to work two double crochet and a picot stitch between each set of two double crochet across. Yarn over, Skip those next two double crochet, insert between the skip two and that next set of two, and work two double crochet. There's one, yarn over, insert into that same space, work your second double crochet. Going to chain three, 
insert from top to bottom through the front loop, out through the side of the stitch, you have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So go ahead and continue working two double crochet and a picot stitch between each set of two double crochet across until you get to your corner. Click back on the video. You're going to start, I'll start over here. You're going to work your two double crochet picot stitch two times in the corner chain two and then two double crochet picot stitch between each group of two double crochet across. Repeat that around the remaining three sides and I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm back. I worked all the way around my dishcloth. I worked two double crochet and a picot stitch two times in the corner chain two space and then we work the two double crochet picot stitch in between each group of two double crochet and we did that around all four sides this is what your dishcloth should look like now I'm going to go up and just join so I'm turning my dishcloth around we're going to just go up to the top of that beginning chain three part of it is down here so one two and three insert into the top of that beginning chain three and slip stitch yarn over the hook pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook so let me just finish let me just fasten off I'll show you the front and then I'll show you the back so this is the front of your dishcloth and this is what it should look like now when I measure mine it is measuring nine inches well about eight and three quarters and then across ways it's measuring nine inches to that pico stitch so about eight and a half by nine inches so this is the finished dishcloth this is the front and when you turn it over all my ends are weaved in but this is the back of the dishcloth so I hope everybody had fun crocheting with me today. This is just a fun, bright, colorful little floral dishcloth, and you can make it in any color to suit your decor. Thank you, everybody, and remember the link to this pattern is in the description box, and you can also find this pattern on our website, creativegrandma.net. Until next time, happy crocheting!